The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But one of their number is missing, and his unbelief prompts another visit from the Lord. A reading from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But when he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples again were in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through the believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Be Please be seated. There was a lady and she was doing some baking for her Easter dinner. And there was a knock at the door. And there was a man at the door with shabby clothes and he was looking for work. And he asked her if there's anything that, she, that he could do for her. And she asked if he could paint. And he said, yes, I'm a good painter. She said, well, here's two gallons of green paint and there's a brush. And there's a porch out back that needs to be painted. But she said, please do a good job and I'll pay you what the job is worth. So he said, great, I'll get it done quickly. She went back to her baking and she didn't think much more about it until there was a knock at the door. She went and it was obvious that he'd been painting because he had green paint all over his clothes. And she said, did you finish the job? He said, yes, ma'am. Did you do a good job? He said, yes, but lady, there's one thing I'd like to point out. That's not a Porsche in the back, that's a Mercedes. There's a pastor who is giving the children's message during church. And for part of the service, he would gather the kids around like Connie Lou does and give them a brief lesson before dismissing them. On this particular Sunday, he decided to use squirrels as his lesson because they're so industrious and they always prepare. So he started out by saying, I'm going to describe something, and I want you to raise your hand, and when you know what it is, let me know. And the children nodded eagerly. He said, this thing lives in trees, and it eats nuts. And no hands went up. And it's gray, and it has a long, bushy tail. And the children were looking at each other, but still no hands went up. And it jumps from branch to branch, and it chatters, and it flips his tail when it's excited. Finally, one little boy raised his hand, and the pastor sighed a relief. He said, well, little boy, what is it? And he goes, I know the answer must be Jesus, but it sure sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> so there's a funeral service for a woman who had just passed away, and at the end of the service, the pallbearers were carrying the casket out, and accidentally they bumped into a wall. They heard a faint moan, and they opened up the casket, and they found out that she was actually alive. She lived ten good more years before she died. Again, there was a funeral at the same church, and at the end, the pallbearers were carrying her out in the casket, and as they were walking out, her husband called out, Please, this time, watch out for the wall. <laughs> so there's an inexperienced preacher who was to hold a graveside service, and it was for a very poor man in a, in a, in a cemetery where they have indigent people. He didn't know where the cemetery was, and he got lost. And eventually, after an hour, he found the cemetery, but the hearse was nowhere in sight. 
The backhoe was by the hole, and the workmen were sitting under a tree eating lunch. Being this was one of his first funerals, he wanted to do it right, so he went to the open grave and he found the vault and the lid had already been in place. But he felt so guilty, he decided to preach this wonderful and lengthy service. He wanted to send this man off into the great beyond in style. He did the best he could, and as he was returning to his car, he overheard one of the workmen say to the other, I've been putting in septic tanks for 20 years and I ain't ever heard anything like that. <laughs> in many churches, the second Sunday of Easter is celebrated as Holy Humor Sunday. So we decided to try it today. It builds on the good news that was celebrated last week. Jesus was dead and now he's alive. The women can come to the tomb in tears, but they left in joy and laughter. The greatest story in history. Christ is risen. Yes, All right. Holy Humor Sunday celebrates the fact that the resurre resurrection of Jesus Christ is God's ultimate joke on evil and death. It says in Psalm 2 that God sits in the heavens and laughs at the foolishness of humanity and any forces that seek to thwart divine purposes. Here is a five-year-old's version of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever laughing life. God wants us to be able to laugh together, to love, and to have a life filled with joy. But as wonderful as Easter Sunday makes us feel, Monday comes. The real world intrudes on us. There's depressing news on the media. Our parents age and slow down. Our kids get sick. Our health deteriorates, buildings burn, bills pile up. Every day on the news we see people killing each other, countries working to destroy each other, and we plot to create the biggest and the smartest nuclear weapons. And perhaps that's why our lectionary offers us the same gospel lesson year after year after year on the Sunday after Easter. The disciples, at least most of them, are locked into this room securely Scared to death that the same fate will happen to them that happened to their Lord Jesus Christ. They heard the story. The women told them about the empty tomb. But at this point for them, it was a story. And then all of a sudden, Jesus appears before them. Peace be with you. Can you imagine their reaction? They were terrified. And then at some point, that fear turned to joy. Once they saw it was really Jesus, scars and all, as the text tells us, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And what joy and what celebration they had. Jesus himself said that he came that my joy be in you and that your joy may be complete. That first Easter concludes with these words, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, you are not forgiven. Then we know the rest of the story. Our dear friend Thomas, unless I see the nail marks in your hands and put my finger where your nails, the nails were and put my hand into your side, I will not believe it. I like Thomas. He's honest. He has the guts to vocalize his doubts. And I think at some point we can all relate to Thomas. There are times in our lives when it seems that everyone else is laughing and enjoying the joke, but we just don't get it. Perhaps, like Thomas, we didn't give ourselves a chance to get it. Then suddenly Jesus says, Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out. Touch my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas doesn't need to touch. He only needs to see Jesus and his wounds, and he responds, my Lord and my God. Now Thomas is in on the joke, and let that celebration begin. Jesus has defeated death. He has taken our sins to the cross, died for us, and given us freedom and forgiveness from all that burdens us. Several years ago, the Saturday Evening Post ran a cartoon showing a man that was about to be rescued after he had spent a long time shipwrecked on his tiny desert island. The sailor in charge of the rescue team stepped off the beach, handed the man a stack of newspapers, and said, Compliments of the captain. He would like you to glance at the headlines and see if you would still like to be rescued. Sometimes the headlines scare us. Sometimes we feel like evil is winning. Then Easter comes to remind us that there's no grave deep enough, 
No seal tight enough, no stone heavy enough, no evil strong enough to keep Christ in the grave. That's a reminder we all need from time to time that life can be so burdensome that we can be depressed, discouraged, and despondent, that we can get so far down we can't remember up. And then comes a day like today, a day for laughter and lightheartedness, a day to celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ's resurrection over death in the grave, a day that we join our voices with God who sits in heaven and laughs, a day to remember the word of Jesus who said, I am, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. A neighbor asked Joseph of Amarathea why he gave up his beautiful hand stone tomb to someone else, somebody he didn't really even know. And Joseph replied, it wasn't a problem. He only needed it for the weekend. George Burns said this about church. The secret of a good sermon is to have a good beginning, a good end, and to make the two ends as close together as possible. <laughs> Amen.